Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers. I am in Barcelona this weekend to do the Barcelona Marathon. Now, normally I would do a little intro before the race, but the queues were so big for the toilet that I didn't get a chance to. So I've actually finished the race now, um, but this is my intro. Uh, I'm actually going to try and get my bag, and I'm probably going to talk about the race when I'm back at my hotel later. So, catch you in a bit. So I did say at the start of the video that I was going to head back to my hotel and do a race report for the Barcelona Marathon. I didn't do that. We ended up going to the pub and spent most of the day there. So uh, I wasn't in a, a state to do a race report video. Um, but Barcelona Marathon is a race that I've not necessarily always wanted to do. It's not been on the top of my list of marathons that I wanted to um, take part in. But I've got a lot of friends who haven't done a marathon before and they want to do a marathon and it just worked out well. So for this trip, I went along with eight friends of mine, many of whom hadn't done a marathon before. So it was an opportunity for a load of people to, to get their first marathon. Um, and Barcelona is one we picked because it's not that expensive to do. You don't have to go through a ballot to get into it. Um, and going away with a bunch of friends, it's nice to go somewhere in Spain where it's probably going to be a bit sunny and you've got places to eat and drink at afterwards. I didn't really test that out during the Barcelona Marathon. Uh, I used the Alpha Fly Wands, a shoe that I've used many times before. I didn't really have anything to test out uh, on my feet. Uh, but I did manage to test out the Creative Outlier Free Pro Bone Conduction um, headphones. So I'm gonna dive into those in a bit. But first, let's talk about the Barcelona Marathon. <music> So as I said, I've never done the Barcelona Marathon before. I've done a lot of Spanish marathons. So I've done Seville, I've done Valencia, I've done Bilbao, I've done Madrid. And I've enjoyed all of those apart from Bilbao because that was very badly organized. But the other ones I absolutely loved. And I quite often say that uh, Spanish marathons are the best marathons in the world. And the reason for that is that they have really wide roads most of the time. It's normally quite nice weather. They're great places to go afterwards for food and drink. Whereas some places that I've been to like Munich, wasn't that good for um, enjoying yourself after the race. So Barcelona, I was hoping it was gonna be similar to those other ones. It's a big marathon. It's got, I think it had about 16, 17,000 people that were, were in it. So it was a pretty, pretty big marathon to do. Um, I don't know a lot about Barcelona. I've been there once before, but I can't really remember a lot about it. So it was quite exciting for me to go and to check out the place and try some bars and restaurants out. So the, the marathon itself, it takes place uh, all across the city. Uh, you start off in the center and you sort of run around back and forth uh, throughout the city. Uh, there are some landmarks that you cover as part of the race. Uh, you of course go past the cathedral, which is quite impressive. Um, but other than that, there I don't remember a great deal of landmarks on the route. There's a little bit where you go past the sea as well, which is really nice. Um, and we did get to see a few places that we, we hadn't seen um, before doing the marathon so it's a nice way to to see the city the race itself is fairly flat if you look at the elevation um chart that you can find online i'll pop up on the screen here it looks like it's it's relatively hilly and it did scare a few of my friends that had never done a marathon before but in fact when you're actually out running on it uh, I don't think it's that bad. A couple of my friends did say that they noticed the hills quite a bit. Then I do remember a couple of them. There's a bit on a dual carriageway where you go off quite a long time and then you go back down afterwards. Um, but overall, I don't think it was that bad in terms of elevation. I definitely didn't have any issues, major issues when it came to hills on it, but I did notice a few of them. So uh, it may be if you're new to a, a marathon and um, you really want the flattest one to go to, then Barcelona might not be it. The organization was really good. We went to the expo on the Saturday, which is it's a pretty good expo. It's not as big as something like London or New York, obviously, um, but it does have a few bits and pieces there. That I don't remember loads to do there, uh, and it was pretty efficient though. So we got in there, got some chocolate 
protein bar to eat and then just um, picked up our stuff and then left. So that was pretty nice and easy. There wasn't a massive cure or anything for it. So it was really quite a convenient uh, expo to go to from that point of view. The race itself starts at the same place as the expo. Um, and I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well organized it was apart from the toilets. And I've had this problem at every Spanish marathon I've ever done. There's never enough toilets. I mean, it's, you get this at most races, but um, I really noticed that this one, the queue was massive. I was in the queue for 40 minutes before the start and my wave was uh, one of the first waves and I couldn't go in it. I had to go in uh, quite far back into another wave because I'd been queuing for so long. So I ended up um, having to get past a lot of people to get ahead into where my, my the people that were running at my pace, pace were. So that wasn't ideal. Everything else was pretty good about the start line though. So uh, it was fairly efficient to get started off. Each wave starts off separately and uh, somebody was singing Barcelona or two people were singing Barcelona with a band at the start of every wave, which was quite impressive. <laughs> The race itself is it's pretty enjoyable. Uh, this, it's a nice place to see when you're running around. I would say that Barcelona, a lot of the streets do feel pretty similar. So you get in a little bit of a, uh, a, a mindset that you're sort of doing the same thing over and over again. So there's not a lot of variety in the marathon itself, uh, but the roads are really wide. Uh, there's loads of water stations. There's lots of gels later on. There's not really any earlier on, um, but they also have lots of fruits like oranges and bananas on route uh, and they have um, energy uh, drink as well that you can have. So all in all, it's a really well organized race. The finish line is quite nice. It's quite a hard finish line because you end up seeing, there's quite a few uh, th things that look like a finish line and you end up going through three of them before you get to the actual finish line. So it does drag a bit that last bit. But when you finish, it's, it's quite nice. The baggage drop uh, is right at the end. You pick your stuff up and then everyone just sort of lies down in this big park area and just sits and relaxes and has a beer and things like that. So it's a great finish to a marathon. And the other thing I noticed about Barcelona Marathon is that there it's not like London where everywhere's rammed afterwards. It seemed to get pretty quiet pretty quickly after the marathon. So we managed to go to a bar straight away afterwards and there was no issues and that was pretty close to the finish line. So all in all, I was quite impressed with Barcelona Marathon. I think it's well worth doing if you're looking for a marathon that's easy to get into um, and you want to try out somewhere that's a little bit different and you want to enjoy it and, and maybe go with some friends or go with the family because it's a really nice place to go, Barcelona, if that's what your focus is. The time I got in the race was 3.13.58, which is not a great time for me. It's it's my second fastest time at a marathon, but it's a long way off the PB I got in Chicago, uh, my 2.55 PB. But I didn't really do any long distance training for this. I really went to enjoy it. Um, and I didn't want to put in all of the training hours that I'd done for Chicago because that took up a long time. And I didn't want to do that again. But I'll probably do that again in my autumn marathon. Uh, so all in all, I was happy with it. And um, it was a very good race. Okay, so jumping into the Creative Outlier Free Pros. So these, uh, I got these a couple of days before the marathon. I hadn't used them before that race. Um, and these are bone conduction headphones, similar to Shocks headphones that you'll get. Uh, and I'd never tried, um, I'm not sure if there's been, I think there's another version of these as well that you can get, not the pro version. Um, so I was interested to see how they compared with Shocks, because Shocks are the only bone conduction headphones that I've used so far. Uh, I have used quite a few pairs of Creative headphones over the last couple of years, and I've always been very impressed uh, with Creative headphones when it comes to sound. Uh, not necessarily the design of them, sometimes the design seems a little bit bulky for me. Um, but these are pretty much what you'd expect from bone conduction headphones. Uh, they are a bit bigger, I think, than Shocks. Uh, they do feel a little bit chunkier than Shocks, which sort of made me think, oh, I'm not gonna enjoy these as much when in the race. Um, the pads on the sides and everything just feel a little bit bigger. So it's not a massive noticeable thing when you've got them on your head. I didn't notice them at all after getting a couple of K in, but I did think they're a bit bigger than what I'm used to with my Shocks bone conduction headphones. Now, the when I actually set these up, it was all pretty simple, same as what you'd get with, with Shox headphones. It paired pretty easily. The one thing that I would say about these is that the buttons all fit on this section on the right hand side and they're quite close together. So they, are, they aren't as easy to control as Shox headphones. Shox have a separate button on the side of one of these um, temple pads uh, and that controls the, the pausing um, 
of the headphones, which is really useful because you know exactly where it is. This is a bit trickier because when you're on a run, sometimes you're pressing the wrong button and you, you, you want to press the volume and then you turn them off and things like that. So I do think the design of the buttons isn't great uh, and can be a bit annoying when you're out on the run. Other than that, I think they were fine. I think the sound was very good. I didn't, I definitely didn't notice any difference between these and Shocks. I might even think these are a little bit louder than Shocks, um, which is a, which is a nice thing to have. Which you'd hope if because they feel a bit bigger as well, um, but not massively. I don't think I'd pick these up instead of my Shocks uh, for for the sound. The thing I know about these headphones is that they can hold eight gig of music, which is actually quite impressive because you don't get that on Shocks. Um, and sometimes when I do a marathon, I don't want to take my phone with me. Uh, or I can't be bothered to set up my Garmin watch to link Spotify to it. So that's a really nice little feature that you don't get on normal shocks. Um, I've not used it yet, um, but it's well. I think it's a nice little addition to have on these. So you can go for a run and not take anything with you. You've just got these in there. It gigs quite a lot for music as well if you've got uh, MP3s downloaded. The other thing as well is that they are meant to be able to be used to go swimming in them, which I again have not tried yet, but that's a nice little addition as well. So they're they're waterproof and you're meant to be able to go, go underwater in them and swim comfortably in them and have no issues at all, which is a nice bonus to get, which you don't get with some other bone conduction headphones as well. So overall, I was pretty impressed with these. Um, I'm gonna use them a few more times, see if I end up liking them more than my shocks. I think for me, it really comes down to that lightness. Um, and I use the Open Mini Pros, uh, Shox Open Mini Pros, and they're really small, really light. I think these are just a little bit too big, a little bit chunkier when compared. But I think the, the benefits of this are, are more so than what you get in the shocks. So those that, that, that uh, music downloadability on them and the fact that you can go swimming in them pretty big plus points um, for a pair of bone conduction headphones, um, but I haven't tested them yet. So if uh, it, I'll do a full review of these at some point and uh, see what see how those features work, because they don't work very well, then I'd probably go for shocks. But I was impressed with these during the run. Okay, so that's it from me on the uh, Barcelona Marathon 2023. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell, all those different things. And well done to all of my friends who did it as well, because a lot of them had never done a marathon before. They didn't know what time they would get. And yeah, they uh, they all did really well. Everyone finished it. Most people got around the 4 to 4.20 mark, got a couple of nice PBs in there. So well done, guys. Uh, I'm going to book another one in soon. Uh, so suggestions for the next lads marathon trip, put them in the comments. That's it from me. Catch you later. <laughs>